Okay, welcome back after the break. Um, Sandeep Das has a question, and then we'll move to Shahani Chapman. Um, Sandeep Das says, are we to submit to the church or to our calling? So you're saying, are you, are you saying that we need to submit to what the church is telling us to do? Uh, or what the church thinks is our plan and purpose for our lives? Or are you saying, is that what you're saying, Sandeep? Are you saying that? So from what I get from your uh, question, because you're not giving me any follow-up, I'll just answer what I um, perceive or understand is that you don't submit to the church, okay? It's not people who tell you the plan and purpose for your life. Who has a plan and purpose for your life? It's God, right? So you don't do your own calling. Uh, you don't have, you don't know what is your own calling. You can have plans and purposes and will for your life. The Bible says, many are the plans of a man's heart, but the plans of God's heart is what prevails, it what lasts. Okay, so you pursue what God is calling you to do. Yes, Shahani Chapman, you have your hand raised. Do you like to say something, ask a question? Yeah, I guess, um, because I know you had said at the beginning that um, God knew, you know, he, he, he knew the very beginning of things that would happen to people's lives. And I guess I was, I guess it kind of made me think about bad things that happen. I know you said that people can, you know, sin, all this kind of stuff, but what if things that that happen in people's life if you lose a child that's not from sin or you know sexual abuse and all that kind of stuff how does that play into god's purpose if he knew every i guess he knew all that was going to happen before the foundation of the world uh sorry i could not hear you clearly um so but what i this is too loud please can you reduce it thank you yeah because I have an inbuilt microphone, <laughs> I don't really need a mic. So, from what uh, Shahani, uh, you're saying uh, is, God has. Uh, you're saying that I said God has a plan and a purpose, and you're saying, um, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you clearly. If you could say that again, and again, please. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you increase your volume of your mic, please, so that we can hear you loud and clear? Can you hear me okay. now? So louder, please. Yeah, can you say can you something now? Out? Now can it's too. Okay, go ahead. You can hear me? Yes. Okay, what I was saying was that I know you were saying, um, in terms of God, you know, planned out our, you know, He knew everything was going to happen in our life before the foundation of the earth. And now I was thinking about in terms of things that are happening are bad. And I know you were saying that. You know, you know, if you sin and stuff, you know, that's, you know, that's, I can understand when people sin and bring things on themselves, but what about things that people don't bring on themselves when they lose a child or there's some kind of sexual abuse that goes on? How do we, I guess, how is that part of God's plan and purpose if he knew all that was going to happen before the foundations of the, uh, of the earth? Yes. Now I got your question. Thank you. Uh, so yes. Um, uh, we need to understand that when God created everything, he created a perfect world. He had given the, uh, the earth as dominion to man. And he never stepped out of that boundary or what he had, uh, he had in a sovereign will decided. And that is why we also see that when uh, Satan um, tempted Adam and Eve, God did not, uh, you know, initiate or stop it it went ahead because god had given the authority god had given the dominion to or of earth to man and man had control and dominion over the earth and so when adam and eve sinned uh, you know they gave their dominion to satan so we live in a fallen world and if you read romans chapter 1 we also see that uh, you know how people exchange the truth for a lie, how they started following, uh, you know, um, worshipping idols for the true and living God, and how that led to every kind of immorality, every kind of se sexual perversion. And uh, what does it say? God gave them up to their debased mind. So God is saying, hey, 
this is not what I planned for you, but if this is your choice, then because I've given the dominion of the earth to you, this is your choice, your plan, you go and do what you want to do. Okay, this is your choice. God does not treat us like robots. And so when God gave us a dominion, we gave it to Satan. Now Satan has control or access over the world. So how do we know that? We read that in, 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 in Luke chapter 4 when, when Jesus was tempted by uh, Satan. You know, he says, all authority on earth has been given to me. How does he say that? It's because the authority was given to him by man. And man was given that authority by God. And also, if you read Romans, Paul says that all of creation groans for redemption. So we are living in a world that is fallen, that is corrupted, that is uh, uh, living in immorality, in everything that is not of God, because the, uh, Satan has dominion over the earth. And that is why we see all of these things happen. Like there is abuse, there's rape, there's sexual abuse, there's every kind of um, things that are happening, which is not what God has planned, which is not something that even there's sickness and disease. And we know that God is not the author of sickness and disease. So we live in a fallen world. So even as I am a believer, even as I, uh, you know, live in this fallen world, I can catch a flu, I can catch a viral infection, I can even catch COVID, right? So we are all prone to it because we live in a fallen world. But even though we live in a fallen world and we live in a world that uh, we, we uh, also can engage with the elements of this world and the elements of the world can bring in a lot of challenges and difficulties and Satan can also bring that in our lives but yet God uses those challenges, God uses those um, things that Satan brings to turn it around for good. That is why Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, all things work for the good of those who love him and call according to his plan and his purpose. So sometimes, you know, um, when bad things happen to believers, it's when we have stepped out of our boundaries. Okay, when we step out of our boundaries, that's when we open ourselves to the enemy. We open ourselves to the elements of this world and uh, enemy is like a roaring lion waiting to devour us. So I also need to be very careful as a lady looking at things that are happening in the world around me that what time I step out, where do I go, places where I go, people I engage with, uh, the kind of relationships that I have. So when things happen, be uh, you know, I can't blame God. I can't blame people. I can't blame circumstances. It's because of my wrong choices. So it's always important that we make the right choices. We make it around God's word and be careful that we don't step out of the boundaries that God has placed in our lives. And that is why it's God has given us rules and commandments and laws. Rules, commandments and laws are not to make our lives difficult, but is to keep us within God's boundaries so that we can experience God's blessing, we can experience God's protection. Did that help, Shahani? Yeah, and also too, like, for example, like if somebody, you know, you know, loses, you know, a child, I don't think that's, you know, anybody stepping out of boundary as a believer, but when that happens, that can really um, do a lot to a person. So in terms of, but, so I guess you're saying that even though that can, that can traumatic, like that can happen, I guess you're saying that um, God can still fulfill his plan for your life. Because sometimes that can make people kind of go off. Yeah, so even when we step out of God's boundaries and then we realize we have made a mistake, we come back to God and ask for repentance and forgiveness. Um, uh, yes, God forgives us, but we um, sometimes you know, face the consequences of our sins. Um, but yes, God can turn around and use that for his glory as well when we come back to him in repentance and obedience and submission. Did that help? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, there's so many questions. Okay. Um, God has planned for believe unbelievers. What do you all think? Yes. Because we know he's a good God. He's, a, he's not a partial God. He loves everyone. He sends rain both on the good and the evil. Okay, he sends rain both on the good and evil. He has plans for them as well. Yes. 
Joanne says, salvation is God's plan to redeem the world. Most of us who are believers were once unbelievers. That is why Jesus said he has not come for the believers. He has come for sinners, which means that God has planned for everyone, not excluding unbelievers. It is his free will to accept the gift. Yes, yes. Thank you, Joanne. Elkanah says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but God will deliver them from them all. Amen. Thank you. Okay, that's uh, helping me. Thank you, Joanne and Elkanah, helping me with those uh, answers. Uh, Sandeep, is our job and our relation God's plan? Is our job and our relationships God's plan? Yes, everything. Everything is God's plan for our lives. Relationships, yes. Jobs, careers, everything is God's plan for our lives. Siraj, we need to stick with God's plan where we can see God's plan in the scriptures. So are you asking me uh, where can we see God's plan in the scriptures? Is that is what you're asking me, Siraj? Where can we see God's plan in the scriptures? Okay, so we're going to study fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And we've already seen so many scripture passages where we've also seen God's plan. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Um, Psalms 139, verse uh, 16. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. If you look at page uh, pages, uh, 1, 2, 3... Four, and we'll be studying more. You will see all of these are scriptures that talk about God's plan for our lives. Okay. Thank you, online students, for your questions. Um, we'll move on. Okay. So we said that God has good plans for our lives. Another scripture passage that we can read is Romans 8.28. Can somebody read Romans 8.28, please? Who has the mic? Can you pass the mic to somebody else and, so that they can read? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. You can keep passing the mic so that others also get a chance to read. Yes. So it says here that we know that all things, not some things, few things, but all things work together for good to those who love God and who are called according to his purpose, okay? So everything works for the good for those who love God. This is again going back to Shahani Chapman's question. And those who are called according to his purpose. So does God call only few people? No, he calls everyone. But like Joanne said, you know, it's a free will. Everyone has a choice whether they want to accept the gift or not okay so we see that all things work for the good of those who love him and called according to his purpose so we are saying don't be afraid of god's plan and purpose for your life there is nothing better than fulfilling pursuing and knowing god's plan plan and will for your life but even as we want to know god's good plan for our lives there are some things that we need to keep in mind okay so what are the some things that we need to keep in mind? The first thing is that we need to cooperate with God to fulfill his plan and purpose. So some of us think, hey, God has a plan and purpose for my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we sit down and say, God, give me your plan and purpose. Okay. He gives us his plan and purpose and we say, hey, very good. I know God's plan and purpose. We just don't take and sit down with it, right? When you get a certificate of a course that you have completed, whether it is any course, whether it's teaching, medicine, engineering, being a chef or anything, what do you do? What do you do? You just take that certificate and hang it on the wall as a great accomplishment. What do you do? You use, you search for jobs or you use the skills and talents that you have been equipped with and you do something about it, right? So you need to cooperate with God to fulfill his plan and purpose for your life. You know, God does not look at us as robots. We are not robots, okay? He does not tell us, hey, come here, do this. Don't go there. This is not right. That is not right. This is not good. This is not God, my plan for your life. No. He does not treat us like robots. He reveals his plan and purpose for our lives, but he looks to us to cooperate with him to fulfill his plan and purpose for our 
lives. So Paul put it this way. Look at what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Can somebody read that, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. Amen. So he says that we are God's fellow workers or we are God's co-workers which means that God is looking up to each one of us to execute to bring about the plan and the purpose that he has for our lives to bring it here on earth so he's looking up to us to fulfill both the general plan or the eternal plan and purpose he has and the specific plan and purpose that he has for us but each one of us need to be cooperating with god so when we cooperate with god is it going to be easy it's going to be easy no it's going to involve hard work a lot of sweat um, going to be tiring but we see that you know um god is going to enable us and strengthen us but we need to discover god's plan and purpose so god's plan and purpose for our lives is no mystery okay it's absolutely pointless for god to say hey i have written down a plan for your life but if he's not going to tell it to us it's going to be absolutely pointless it's going to be absolutely pointless if god says hey i have a great big dream for your life i have a purpose for your life but i'm not going to tell you you know that's going to be absolutely pointless okay so some of us walk around you know the world you know saying thinking that god's will for our life is mysterious like even god himself doesn't know about it but we are going to study in chapter 2 that god is more than willing to reveal his will plan and purpose for our lives but to be for him to reveal his plan and purpose for our lives what should we do we need to pray we need to seek right we need to be willing to seek after his plan and purpose for our lives okay all we need to do is seek that is how you cooperate with god and he's willing to reveal it to us okay so we look at nine ways or we look at nine guideposts on how we can discern god's plan and purpose for our lives in any given season of our lives okay so there are nine um pointers nine guideposts nine um, ways that we can discern god's plan and purpose for your life it's page number five we will be studying each one of them in detail okay so when god before god fulfills his plan and purpose for our lives what do you think he will do with us before you go on to become a doctor or an engineer or a pilot or a teacher or a chef what do you have to do you have to pray, uh, practice, right? Uh, sorry, you have to train, right? You have to prepare yourself and then you practice, right? So there is preparation time, okay? So the more the preparation time, the more likely you are going to succeed or be successful in the plan that God has for you. And preparation time is never wasted time. For some of you, preparation time can be one year, some can be five, some can be 15, some can be 30 years. We will look at the preparation time that Moses, Paul, and others had to go through, okay? So the preparation time is never wasted time, okay? Many of us don't like preparation time, yes or no? We like action, right? God, tell me, this is your plan. When are you going to fulfill this plan? What are you doing with my life right why three years of bible college why four years of bible college one year is more than enough right but the longer the preparation process the more successful you are going to be okay so before any action there is preparation tell your neighbor before there is action there is preparation and tell your neighbor greater the call greater the preparation amen for example, if you want to be a junior lecturer in a college, you just want to be a junior lecturer in a college, what is the degree that you want, need to have? A diploma? A master's, yes, an MA or a MSc. But you want to be a senior professor? 
PhD, yes. So greater the calling, greater the preparation, right? So when we can look at it in the worldly terms, right? Why not in spiritual terms? Sometimes we think, should we study three years, four years to become a pastor? I just know the Bible. I can read the Bible. I can preach. I can just become a pastor, right? So when we are ready to go through such a great preparation process to become a doctor, an engineer, four years, five years, to do a PhD, to become a senior professor, why not about the things of God, okay? So greater the call, greater the preparation, okay? Um, yes, so we need to journey with God, okay? to discover the plans and purposes he has for us. And we need to get ready to fulfill those plans and purposes. Now, when we are going through that preparation process, can we make mistakes? Can we all make mistakes? Yes, I guarantee you that we will all make mistakes along the way. Because none of us are perfect, right? We all make mistakes. But God is greater than our mistakes. Amen? And God can help us overcome our mistakes and our failures. And he can help us complete his call. Okay. So we should never allow our mistakes to become a dead end in our life. Okay. Keep going. Come back to God. Say, God, I made a mistake. God, help me. I know you can help me overcome my mistakes or my weaknesses. Take me further, God. I'm willing to do what it takes. I'm willing to correct myself. I'm willing to change God. And so... You know, those are the things that we need to cooperate with God during that preparation process. Yes, we will all make mistakes. It's okay. God is fine with that. He knows we are not perfect. He loves us just the way we are. But he's waiting for us to go back to rectify those mistakes so that he can help us and he can pour into our lives. Okay. Now, there are some other things that we need to keep in mind. That any weaknesses that we do not conquer... Any weaknesses in our lives that we don't overcome will be used by Satan against us. So Satan can use our own weaknesses against us. Okay. So any unconquered weaknesses, any things of the flesh, any sinful behavior, attitudes, and patterns that you see in your life, you know, it is not conquered, it is unconquered, usually births a tragedy. That is why sometimes the preparation process for some of our lives can be longer than usual because God is saying, hey, there are so many unconquered weaknesses and these unconquered weaknesses, if I put you in the place where I have planned and purpose for you, it can birth a tragedy. So rather than birthing a tragedy where it will be your downfall, your shame, a disgrace, and which can ruin the lives of so many or affect the lives of so many, God deals with us as individuals. So it's important for us to know what are our weaknesses. We can't just say, hey, anger is something that is coming down from generations in my family. I'm born angry. That is how I'm created. I can't, I can't do anything with it. No. That's an unconquered weakness. There can be subtle unconquered weaknesses like, what are some of the subtle things? Unconquered weaknesses. Envy, yes. Jealousy. Pride. Hatred. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Sinful, um, uh, you know, uh, things that we are engaging in which nobody knows. All of these can be unconquered weaknesses and Satan can use that to birth tragedies, to bring down your downfall and God knows it. And so that is why God deals with those areas even before he takes us to the place that he has appointed us. Okay. So if you don't conquer it, it's going to cause accidents in your life. It's going to cause a tragedy. You know, when accidents happen in your life, it can be very fatal. Yes or no? You can even lose your lives. And also, when you have an accident, it takes time for you, your body to repair, right? To get back. Sometimes it takes a longer time. Sometimes you can't use that part of the body. So God knows all of these things and takes you through the preparation time. So you need to cooperate with God. 
If you want your preparation process to end fast, you need to cooperate with God. Look at the weaknesses God is pointing, the Spirit is showing you. Repent of that change. Ask God to help you so that you can come to a place where he is going to use you in a great way. Okay? So your greatest enemy is not things that are outside you. It's things that are inside you. Sometimes we blame everything. We put the blame on poor Satan, actually. You know, Satan did this. Satan that, that, did that. You know, or people did this. You know, or my situation was like this. Hey, we all have challenges. We can rise above that. But some, most of the time, our challenges, our weaknesses is not outside, but it is inside. When you yourself are not coming to that place of humility to see what is your own weakness. Sometimes we are not humble enough to say, yes, I, what I did was wrong. You know, I need to change. Or get feedback from others and say, yes, I need to change in this area. And that is what will really help you. Okay. So the wrong attitudes, the pet sins. Why do I say pet sins? Some of the sins have become like a pet for us. Right? You know, like we just harbor it in our lives. Just there. Anger is a pet sin. Jealousy can be a pet sin. Pride can be a pet sin. Okay? Sorry? Anger, yes, can be a pet sin. Okay? So, um, we can't blame the devil. We can't blame him for everything that he's doing in our life. Some of the greatest obstacles that we face in life is something that we birth in ourselves. Okay? So, you know, whenever we make mistakes, yes, it can delay the, the plan and purpose for our uh, lives. But there's no point in mulling over those mistakes, sitting back, crying over it, grieving over it, you know, of the wrong choices that you've made. You know, just go ahead and repent and ask God to uh, change you. Okay. So maybe you have wasted five years of your life. Or maybe you're saying, hey, I'm in my 30s, I'm in my 40s. Now I'm doing something useful with my life. It really doesn't matter. Because, you know, God can reverse things in our life. How many years did Jesus need to do everything that he did on the earth? Just three and a half years, right? So God is, um, can, you know, accelerate things. He can help you accomplish things. You know, um, what he can, you know, he can do all the things that, the locusts have eaten. He can, you know, bring back all that is lost. But we need to find ourselves in the right place and doing what is right in God's sight. So uh, the greater our mistakes, the greater the preparation time. But God is greater than time and God is greater than our mistakes. Amen? Amen? Yeah. So um, look at what Apostle uh, Paul, you know, uh, when he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, what was his age? How old was Apostle Paul when he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ or encountered Jesus Christ? Yeah, maybe somewhere 33 or 35. He might have told God, God, you know, why didn't you touch my life when I was playing marbles or when I was climbing up trees? You know, why did it, why did it wait so long till I had to come to Damascus, you know? But the nice thing is, look at what Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. Now, when he's writing 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, he's basically writing out of prison. Okay, and he knows his life is going to come to an end. He knows that he is going to be martyred. And so this 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy are the last epistles or last letter of Paul. And look at what he's writing during the last stages of his life. And can somebody read 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8, please? For I am already being poured out as a drink of drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved is appearing. Amen. So what is Paul saying here? Verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the 
faith. He says, hey, I finished my course. I finished my race. I've completed what God has taken hold of me. Okay. I completed whatever God wanted me to complete. It's done. And so he's saying, I'm ready to take off. Okay. He's ready to take off. So, you know, it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter which stage you are in life. Okay. But if you learn this, that, you know, you will, and you will get this understanding that, you know, you say, God, maybe I wasted all these years of my life, you know, but here I am. I know you have a plan and purpose for my life and I want to fulfill your plan and purpose for my life. And you say, God, the rest of my life, I'm going to do it according to your plan and your purpose. And that's going to be exciting because what God can fulfill in a short span of time, you would not be able to have done it the entire life. Like Paul says, right? Even though he came to know God at the age of 33, 35, at the end of his life, he says, I've completed what God has called me. I've taken hold of that which he has taken hold of me. Okay. Um, look at 2 Timothy um, um, chapter 1, verse 9. What does Paul say? Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our work, but according to his own purpose and, and uh, grace which was given to us in Jesus Christ before time began. Amen. So, um, God did not call us because we are so wonderful, because we are so brilliant, or because we are so smart. I'm not saying we are not wonderful. I'm not saying we are not brilliant. I'm not saying that we are not smart. Okay. It, uh, God did not also call us because we are strong, but God did not also call us because of the works that we have done. Okay. And God is not looking at us as these silver golden vessels. He's just looking for yielded vessels. Okay. So God is not looking for how talented, how brilliant, how smart you are, whether you're a gold vessel or whether you are a silver vessel, you know, so that he can pour out your anointing. He is looking for yielded vessels. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God is looking for yielded vessels. What is the meaning of yielded vessels? Yeah, vessels or people who are surrendered to him, submitted to him, total submission, total surrender. So he's looking for vessels that are saying, God, I'm willing to do your will. I'm ready for it. I want to take hold of what you are taking hold of me. Okay. So the Bible says that we have treasures in earthen vessels, right? So we are all earthen vessels. Yes or no? We're made up of, yeah, we go back to the mud, right? We're earthen vessels. So that the greatness of the power of God may be manifested in us. So some of you are saying, hey, God has called me, but I don't feel adequate. I don't feel uh, great. I don't feel I'm the right person. I feel I'm such a great sinner. I have not done anything significant for God. Hey, God is not looking for your ability. He's now not counting on your ability. He's just looking at your av availability. Okay, God is not counting on your ability because he will give you the ability. He is counting on your availability. Just saying, God, here am I. Use me. Okay. And he's looking for your availability. He's looking for your willingness because it's not your power, but his power that is going to come in you to fulfill you, fulfill and enable you to do his plan and purpose for your life. Okay. So it is his power that is going to work through you to get the job done. Amen. Okay. So that is something that you also need to keep in mind. Okay. And something else is be sure that the enemy is going to do everything to stop you from fulfilling God's plan and purpose for your life. So your God-given dream, God-given plan and purpose, okay, can always face demonic oppression. So Satan will do things. He will try to bring delays. You need to know that when delays happen, delays are not from God. Okay, delays are not from God. I'll give you an example. When you look at the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 10, we see that Daniel was praying and he was looking for an answer. But how many days did it take for Daniel to receive the answer? 
21 days it took for Daniel to get the answer. Why did it take 21 days? Yeah. The forces of darkness where or the demonic forces were fighting against the angel that God had sent to give the answer to Daniel. So it took 21 days because the demonic forces were trying to stop him. So was it a delay from God? No, as soon as Daniel prayed, the answer went. But the delay was from Satan. So Satan will attempt to delay your miracles. Satan will delay the time period for your things. He will delay things. But we need to understand that delays are not always from God. Okay, It's either from Satan or sometimes it's our own heart attitudes. And why does Satan bring about these delays? Why does Satan bring about these delays? Yes, it weakens our desire. Distract us. He doesn't just want God's will to be performed in our lives. Yes, it just weakens our drive. It weakens our determination. Okay. And it creates distraction, right? We can be distracted. So we see that, you know, he will distract us. So we say, hey, God, plan A is not working. We'll go to plan G. Then God, plan G is also not working. So let's go back to plan C. You know, so we're going a lot of dis distractions. You're not focused. Okay. So simply breaks our focus and which results in wasted time and energy. Okay. So the delays that Satan brings waste our time, energy by distracting us, by turning our focus to something else. And then we quickly get our focus diverted and we are not pursuing God's plan and purpose for our lives. Okay. So when God has called you to do something, sometimes you'll find you're doing something else. You're focusing on that. You're pumping your time and energy to it. And then end result, you're saying, hey, I'm not being fruitful. God, what is happening? And you've wasted all my time and energy, my money, everything. So we need to know that, you know, these delays are from Satan. So that is why we need to always be conscious and listening to the Holy Spirit and asking God, God, is this your plan? Is this the next step I take? Maybe God says your plan is, I want you to be a pastor of a church. That's great. But God, what is your next plan? Where is the church? Should I go and work for somebody else's church? I need to plant my church. Which place? What I need to do? So every step of the way, we need to ask God for his plan. Otherwise, Satan can distract us and can draw our attention in some other ways. Okay. And lastly, we see that God's plan for our lives is not a hundred meter dash. <laughs> it's not a hundred meter dash. It's not a hundred meters race. You know, it's, it's a marathon. You know, it's a marathon, right? Marathon takes more time than a hundred meters dash. Okay. So the Bible says, run your race with endurance or run your race with perseverance fixing your eyes on jesus the author the perfecter and the finisher of the race that is set before you so you have to run your race with endurance with perseverance the race that is set before you so our life is not a hundred meter dash it's a marathon you keep running you go through seasons of struggles and challenges there are some times when you taste victory there are some times when you go through struggles, okay? Um, yes, all of these are a guarantee when you run the marathon, but you will eventually come to the place of victory. Amen? When you come to that place of victory, you will forget every challenge, every difficulty that you have faced in life, okay? And um, you will be glad that you arrived at your destination, okay? So... There's some encouraging news here that even though Satan can demoralize us, you know, you need to have endurance and perseverance. When the, when the enemy, when Satan looks at you and says, hey, this person is never giving up, enduring, persevering, running up, even if they're feeling tired, weary, even if they're feeling like giving up, this person is not, 
is relentless, just pursuing things, not willing to give up, enduring. When Satan sees you sticking to God's plan and purpose for your life, and that you are not a quitter, that you are not getting distracted, that you are not running off in some other directing, uh, uh, you know, uh, some other way, he's going to get demoralized. So you can demoralize the enemy, okay? With your perseverance, with your endurance, with you not getting distracted and just running your course, okay? So even as we looked at this lesson one, you need to know that God has a plan for your life. He's got places that he wants you to go. He's got people he wants you to meet. He got, he's got lives that he wants you to touch and he got he's got things that he wants you to do so don't settle for anything else there is no greater purpose than pursuing god's plan and purpose for your life amen okay any questions anyone has anything is not clear how do you overcome weakness in certain areas of your life the word of god you have to read god's word the word of god trains us, corrects us, rebukes us, trains us in righteousness and holiness. You need to ask God to forgive you, ask God to pursue holiness, ask God to fill you with his nature. When you're born again, you no longer have your sinful nature, you have the divine nature, and you need to learn how to walk in that divine nature. And that comes to reading God's word and praying and totally surrendering every area of your life okay amen okay so any questions any doubts yes kushbu uh, so um in between you are saying that um, we should be submitting to god we need to submit to yeah, god yes so, uh in churches like um if the person is confused, not able, not able to understand, like what is my purpose? So um, leaders and pastor, they usually say that uh, you just submit to church, submit to us, whatever we are doing. For, okay. Uh, uh, so, like, if we are submitting to our church, to our pastors, then how we will get to know our purpose, like from God? So what do we do? Do we submit to the church, the pastor, or you yeah. submit to God, uh, to his plan and purpose? For plan and purpose. Obviously, you are, you are going to church, you are submitted to pastors and leaders. Yes, you need to obey, yes, uh, obey leadership. But you need to obey leadership when what they are saying is in alignment with God's plan and purpose for your life, and it's in alignment with God's word. They're saying something that is contrary to God's word. They're saying that something that's contrary to God's plan and purpose for your life. Then you have to choose to go with God's word and what plan and purpose for your life. So there are some pastors who preach a lot of doctrines and they that will not be according to God's word. So you even what we are teaching, what I am teaching, you need to look at and go back to God's word and say, hey, what she said was, was it right or not? Right? So God's word is our standard and then if a pastor saying i think god's will for your life is to be a sunday school teacher because he wants somebody to ov yeah. oversee sunday yes. school and you know you're not called for children's ministry right you know god has called you for something else then you need to say i think god i know specifically god has called me to be you know in this area of ministry and i would like to pursue that uh, follow follow up question. Uh, Can you please keep the mic close? Follow up question is uh, like you said that if they are uh, aligning with God's word, but sometimes what happen with people like they are submitted to pastors and uh, leaders, and meanwhile they are not uh, submitting to God because. Check, say check, please. I think the battery is gone. Battery is low. So you can take this mic. Come here, please, Kushbu, and then you can speak. And Oh, there's another one. Okay. Okay, in the meantime, Sobhagya says how to overcome fear. 
well it's not part of our uh, course uh, so fear is um, something that you have uh, you know i think fear is not from god the bible says we have not given a spirit god has not given us a spirit of timidity or of fear but of power la love and a sound mind so you have to break that stronghold of fear in jesus name you take authority and you say in jesus name i break all of these strongholds of fear and i break it in the name of jesus and uh, you need to understand how you've opened those the doors to fear and then what you need to do is you need to meditate on god's word you need to fill your heart and mind with god's word so if you're fearful about something then you need to find out scripture passages about those areas god's promise and so when you are afraid and fearful you just need to declare god's word because god's word is power god's word is authority god's word breaks bondages and strongholds okay so you rebuke that spirit of fear bind it in the name of jesus because he's broken that spirit of fear on the cross and then you have to if you have to overcome fear it's nothing going to be easy you have to read god's word meditate fill your heart and mind with god's word and any time you're afraid about anything hey i can't do this i can't do that you speak god's word i can do all things through christ who strengthens me a promise that comes you know so write down all those the areas where you're afraid write down uh, promises in god's word when you go through that uh, fear situation speak god's word god's word is power it will break through and give you that uh, boldness and the assurance okay yeah another question i'll ask um, is it possible like someone has prophesied over someone okay and and but you haven't listened from god is it will sustain you for long that prophesy will it sustain you when you listen to a prophecy from from pastor and anyone anyone has prophesied over you mm -hmm. and you haven't listened from god you haven't listened from god yeah, so, so when you just... receive a prophecy from anybody you have to go back and validate it with the word of god you need to pray and ask god the holy spirit the holy spirit has revealed it to that prophet or that person he will validate that to you through his word he will also speak to you through his word okay uh i just li like to say if you have any questions apart from what we are studying it's totally fine you can ask that out of class because i'm Check here out. till late in the evening but if you have anything that has been Check thought out. in today's class please go ahead and ask that question if you have anything outside that you can please go ahead and ask me after class is okay that is okay okay um, yeah it's pertaining to what uh, kushbu was uh, telling about the church so i have an experience of that is it okay if i tell it or is it about prophecy or is it about calling? church submitting to church is it okay if i tell okay or? quickly uh, so the thing is uh, submitting to church uh, even when I, I was part of a church so they wanted me to do certain things which i did and um, after finishing that they wanted me to continue in other things which i was uh, not called to so i was praying and god showed me what i had uh, i had to do i i was uh, to move as a missionary to mumbai and uh, then they were like trying to control me you know saying so many other things like you are not spiritually mature and all that stuff uh, but because they wanted me to be there in their control so i prayed i i told god i want to like whatever and i went to mumbai finished my project i am so happy about how god used me there and from then on god has taken me to places um, as pastor was say, saying you know uh, places he wants you to go people's lives he wants you to touch and so many things for you. he wants us to accomplish all that he did it in my life in those years so when i came back i still wanted i still attended that church because it was my home church um, but it didn't seem right and i moved out of that church now um like was it right or wrong like i did what god want me to do like i'm i'm not 
submit it to any person or any institution for that matter like yeah i mean yeah thank you for sharing your example yes i think what he did was right and god used him mightily and he's he has a peace in his heart and uh, god moved him out of that church for his own reason he knows and i'm sure he prayed about it and god would have said move and he's moved yeah it's a good example thank you okay we'll end class thank you all uh, for joining me i have my hand oh, so, so, so sorry shahani yes go ahead so this is about in terms of when you were talking about weaknesses it says any weaknesses that you do not conquer will be used by satan against you so my thing is that if you don't overcome these you don't conquer these weaknesses can it prevent you from god's uh, from fulfilling god's plan if you don't overcome these weaknesses yes it's not that you have to come to a place god is not looking at to, for us to come to that place of perfection to use us he knows that there are certain weaknesses in us i'm not saying that i'm a because i'm a pastor you know i have a title of a pastor that i'm a perfect person no god is still correcting me still perfecting me but he knows there are certain sins that is going to birth tragedies in my life also birth tragedies in the life of people i'm ministering to so then that is what he is going to work on and it's going to take a longer in the preparation process but yes if you don't conquer those weaknesses it will eventually lead us to birthing tragedies and our downfall so that means we won't be able to fill our purpose then sorry that means we won't be able to fulfill our god's purpose for our life then uh in some sense we would be able to but not in the fullest sense but it will birth tragedies it will be our downfall and it will also disturb our you know our ministry and what god is doing and it will not bring fruit in our lives okay. eventually for any area that we are doing we are looking for fruit right okay so it won't necessarily prevent pre prevent us it was just we, basically we can still fulfill our purpose even if we can't really overcome or conquer the weaknesses it'll just be harder the path will just be hard is that what you're saying yes we can continue doing the plan and purposes but even as we are doing that they we will face a lot of challenges a lot of difficulties uh we will not see breakthroughs we will see uh you know we will see a kind of stagnation in uh what we are doing and then we can sense hey why there is no growth why is my business not growing why am i not being fruitful why am i not being happy and then you know that there are some things that are there that is hindering you and then that will lead you to you know repent and ask god for forgiveness and work on those weaknesses and deal with it like he's still dealing with me right Okay, that makes sense. That means it'll make take longer for it feels purpose. Okay, thank you. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you everyone online students for joining class. Have a blessed day. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Ma